before we begin, just got a serious announcement to say. Um, just been to my local e mart and I'm, I'm really confused. As I went to the freezer, there was no lasagna. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hello everybody and how are we all doing today? Welcome to another video. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit different once again. I've, my last few videos have been changing the game up a little bit. Um, I just wanted to really talk about um, a question I've been asked a few times. And that's not just because of the corona outbreak. This has been the three years I've been here, I've been getting this question. Should I come to teach English in Korea? What attracts you to teach here my course? Is it for me? Is it not for me? So um, what I'll do is I'll give you a few pointers. I've got a little bit of a script on the side there now. That's why I keep wandering over there. Uh, a bit of a yes and no and maybe really to the situation. So me, my personal opinion is, should I come to teach uh, English in Korea Mr. of everything that's happening at the moment? I would say yes, of course you should. Uh, the virus has affected a lot of countries at the moment. The, Currently, Corona outbreak in Korea has put the country at like fourth in the world, but obviously Korea is having like 60, 70 people a day, where other countries are now having thousands a day. So put that in perspective. I think Korea sometimes get a bit of a, it's getting singled out a bit, but Korea is probably doing one of the best out of all the other countries, to be completely and utter honest with you. So um, looking at Korea as a country, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mark it off coming to teach here in the slightest. I think generally as I'll go into later in this video, you're probably a lot safer here than you are in other countries in the world for sure. Now, uh, I first want to say, if you come here to teach in Korea, I'm not going to tell you about like recruiting or how to get here. There's a million and one videos on YouTube that does that. I'm going to give you my own personal opinion and some things that you can do whilst you're here. Uh, it's a very opportunistic place. Uh, I've met friends from all over the world in this country, not just Koreans, not just Americans, not just Canadians, not just British, all over the world I've met people from. Um, it's a fantastic place where you can better yourself as a person, really. Now, if you want to spend every weekend going drinking, then that's your life choice. I'm not going to judge you for that. I might be accustomed to do that myself a few times. But uh, some opportunities that I've noticed since I've been here. Uh, volunteer work. You can volunteer here and teach people on the weekends such as North Korean refugees. That's a fantastic opportunity that you can do. Korea, ha the government has a free language course if you want to take to try and practice your Hangul and your Korean whilst you're here. Uh, me personally, on the weekend, I am actually a soccer writer. A football writer. Oh gosh, my British friend's gonna kill me. I'm a football writer. I write for Seoul Eland um, for the website called K-League United. It basically, all we do is do English translations in our own words of the teams and the games that are happening in Korea. Now, um, that's it. I have a lot of selection of friends around the world. Uh, every day is an adventure, uh, with, especially with our football team. One week I'm in Busan, the other week I'm in Daejeon, another week I'm in Ansan, in Buchon. I flew to Gwangju for a game. I'm planning to fly to Jeju when the league starts again to watch Seoul Eland play. So I visited so many cities in Korea simply due to just my love of passion for football, really. Now, uh, talking about chip, chips, talking about chips, talking about tips whilst you're here, here's a few tips that I personally would say that I experienced on my own accord with myself, the own mistakes I made and some things that I did correct straight away and I kind of like just moulded into it. The first one, don't come here with no money. First and foremost, don't come here with no money. I made this mistake. I certainly made this mistake. Now, I I had a few hundred pounds in my bank before I came here, but then I didn't realize the process so much of what you have to do whilst you're here. So I would personally say, sorry, my TV just turned itself on. I don't know what's going on there. Um, once you arrive in Korea, you have your visa and your passport. But once you arrive in the country, you have to wait for a thing called an ARC card. Now that is your your ARC card, you cannot do anything really without it. You need it for your phone if you want to get a phone here. You need it for the internet if you want to have the internet um, provided in your apartment. And you need it for your bank account most, pers uh, most personally, most importantly. So no bank account, you're not getting paid. 
Now that ARC card takes around four to five weeks to get once you arrive in the country. You have your medical check and your health check once you arrive. Then after that, four to five weeks, you should receive it. So going back to you shouldn't come here with no money. You should have a few quid in the bank really to set yourself over until your first paycheck comes. Now I dipped into my overdraft when I first arrived in Korea. Um, I wish looking back on it now, I saved a few extra quid before I came here. But as you can see, I'm doing okay now. I'll find it made me sound like I'm a millionaire. I'm not rich, please don't rob my house. <laughs> but I'm doing, do you know what I mean? I'm not in debt. Let's just say, like, I'm not in debt as such. I'm not in my overdraft where uh, some people maxed out their overdraft whilst being here. I didn't do that. Uh, my personal advice would say make sure you have at least two, three months of work under your belt before you decide to come here. Don't just shotgun it like I did and just decide to come three months after you come here to visit for one week. I came in March and loved it so much I quit my job and came in June. Maybe should have paced out a little bit more because I was shotgunning coming to Korea. But you know, look, I'm doing okay and it worked well for me. So do your own thing personally with that. Now, um, going back to the ARC card for a moment. As I said, it takes four to five weeks from immigration for you to get your card. Now, in the midst of that, you can't get a Korean phone number, you can't get a internet into your house, and you cannot get a bank account, which is most important. Now, um, a positive spin on this, there is Wi-Fi everywhere, shops, cafes, convenience stores, restaurants, you name the place, they have Wi-Fi. There's even Wi-Fi on the subways and the buses now. So you're not stuck for Wi-Fi while you're in this country. You're not gonna be sat twiddling your thumbs every evening. So there are workarounds around it, but just to let you know that the first month of Korea might, 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 most probably be the most difficult for you whilst you're getting everything set up. Now, the third one I would say is don't come to Korea if you're a bit of a lazy person, if you've just like come out of university and you're looking for a gap year. This is not a gap year country. This certainly is not a gap year country. Um, my advice and my thing I always say about Korea is if you work hard, you play hard. You have to work hard here because it's a very hard working culture. That's just part of the culture and ingrained in society. Uh, if you work hard, you're rewarded. If you're lazy, forget about it, basically. Um, I work in 9.6, which is like almost an hour longer than what it is in Britain. Normally 9.5 is our usual time. But in Korea, you can work based around you, but you've got to pick your school first. You can't choose the hours, you choose the school, which is the best hours for you. So I work in 9.6. You could go somewhere that is a, like a 11.7 or a 1.10 or a 1.9. Um, the hours can vary from school to school. So please make sure you check what hours you are working because I like to work 9 to 6 and have the evenings to myself. Some people like to be night owls and be up to 3, 4 a.m. in the morning and then wake up at 12 and roll into school. It's whatever suits you, and that's your own personal opinion, uh, or preference, sorry. Now, secondly, uh, double check, triple check where you are. So recruiters will tell you this fantastic location, which is very close to Seoul, and you might be a million miles away. Please ask for the information of where it is and look it up on either Kakao Maps or on Google Maps to see how far you are from the center. Maybe you want to be out, maybe you want to be in the countryside and enjoy the peace and quiet and real traditional Korean society. Um, but if you want to be close to the center, don't get fooled by telling you this new fantastic place, which is only 20 minutes from Seoul, where it's like an hour and a half away. I've known people that started, people have been tripped because they don't know any better. Do your research and have a look on maps first to see if that is what's well suited to you. Because you might be in a fantastic area, but you might be 30 minutes away from a subway station. So you might as well be in the middle of nowhere next to a bus stop. So, as I said, it's a work hard, play hard culture. A lot of people do come here expecting just a bit of a party. And on the weekends, you know, there's a lot of drinking to be done if that's what you like to do. I personally like a few beers myself, but my personal advice is don't come here thinking that you can just do the minimal work and get the most out of your weekends, the most out of your evening times. It, that's not the case here, it really, really isn't. Now, um, in the midst of all this virus breakout, a lot of people haven't been coming and a lot of people are doing a thing called a midnight run. Now, a midnight run is when you leave your school without telling your school. It's, it's a bit naughty, to be honest. You should never really, never, ever really do it, to be honest. But people leave the school and, and leave the country basically in the middle of the night so they don't know anything. They wake up in the morning, you're not in school. Oh, where are you? You're halfway on a flight going home. It's a bit naughty, you shouldn't really do it because you're not allowed back in Korea for the remainder of your ARC because uh, it's null and void then, so you're technically coming in illegally if you came back into Korea within that year. 
now. With that being said, where are they going to? They're going back to a country which maybe has worse healthcare than Korea. Korea's one of the best healthcare's in the, in the world. And amidst this virus outbreak, I'd rather be here than back home at the moment, to be completely and utterly honest with you. So it's a bit of a silly decision, in my own personal opinion, that people are fleeing Korea to go home, where it's just as bad there as it is here. It's not, not even that bad anymore here, to be honest. It's very slowing down, plus 60, plus 70 a day, where maybe next week we'll go back down to plus 10, plus 20. We don't know, but it is going down. Now, where uh, with people leaving though, the market is open. There's a lot of positions and a lot of schools looking for English teachers. So if you're looking to become an English teacher here, remember, work hard, play hard, save some money up, and just enjoy your time whilst you're here. Don't go out drinking every weekend. People who know me might laugh at me saying that now because I do like a pint or two, but just, uh, do what you want, do what do you really, because obviously I don't live your life, you don't live mine, so um, that's all the advice. Once again, any comments, concerns, situations, if you've got any situations, any comments, concerns, or any questions, just fire away. My Twitter's down there as the start of the video, and subscribe, comment, and as I always say in every video, just relax.